I don't know about you, but I personally think school cafeteria lunches sometimes get a bad rap. Welcome to Meals with Maria. Today I'm making lunches reminiscent of your school cafeteria. These are some things that I think back on and I'm like, yes, I totally remember those on my lunch plate. And I actually have a fond memory of them. So I know there's some things that I would not go back to. There's some sort of mush and uh, discolor, there's meat in there maybe. Uh, but these are not them. These are actually like a souped up version of what you consider to be a lunch lady meal. One of them's actually from like a lunch lady list and it's like written out, typed out. So it's not even like on a real uh, like, like blog, a food blog website. I love it, it's so delicious. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm so excited to share these with you. You're gonna love them. So this is hopefully gonna remind us of our school days where we had that square pizza. And I'm just pouring in one cup of warm water, 0.25 ounces or just one packet of active dry yeast. So I just weighed mine out because I didn't have a packet. I just had like a big container in my freezer and one teaspoon of sugar. And we're just gonna let this go until it dissolves. Now we're just gonna add in two teaspoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of salt, and two and a half cups of bread flour. So you're supposed to knead this until this is very smooth, soft, and elastic. And I'm just a little nervous that I just might have a little too much flour in this because it just doesn't seem soft enough, but it's definitely um, smooth and elastic. So, we're gonna do our best. We're gonna spread this over a nine by 13 pan. Gonna oil up that pan, spread it out, and let it rise for about an hour. All right, it says to use another teaspoon or so of olive oil. I'm not gonna be shy on this, the bottom of my pan. And then it says to use your hands to rub it around. I don't know. Oh, maybe because you're gonna touch the dough after. I'm just gonna follow the recipe because I figured maybe this is how the lunch ladies did it. You gotta get your hands in there. This actually is much more elastic than I thought it would be. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling better about the situation. Like this actually feels quite soft now that it's come out of the mixer. Just trying to make sure it's a little bit more even. It feels a little thick on one side, but I've got a little cling on here down by my feet. He's coming over, he's, Benny has something to say to me. I'm not sure what it is. He can't really talk, but. All right, we're gonna let this sit for an hour. So while that's rising, we're just gonna get our cheese ready. And I have a feeling that the lunch ladies just used uh, just regular shredded cheese. But I think this is because this is like a Detroit style. They're using blocks or cubes of cheese, which I'm totally down for. It's square. We're making, we're just gonna make it better. We're gonna make whatever we did better. So I used one block of Monterey um, Jack and then I had leftover cheddar, so like about a block of cheddar, and then just put that into small pieces. And then we're gonna top our, like it got really puffy after an hour, our dough with the pepperoni, and you just wanna cover the whole thing. And then when you put the cheese on, you really wanna make sure that cheese kinda gets on the edges. And then this is interesting. It said to put the sauce kind of in three rows, and it actually worked out great. Like the sauce ended up on all of the pieces, and it was really saucy and delicious. So. I would do it this way again if I had to do it again. And then kind of along the sauce rows, you wanna put all of those pepperonis. I feel like with the red and white, this is actually like almost like patriotic. <laughs> you wanna bake this at 525 degrees. So it's gonna be really hot for about 15 minutes. And I was nervous that the dough was not gonna cook, but I was so grateful. I mean, look at how bubbly this turned out. It was perfect. And the dough completely cooked through. It was absolutely amazing. I was laughing because I was looking for at the recipe again to just double check the, the numbers and you know how hot I cooked it at. And they completely changed the recipe. Like the recipe is the same, but somebody did some photography for all recipes and they, they did pictures of it. And they, they like, they did it in a sheet pan, which is what I said. And then they used shredded cheese, which is what I said. But the recipe still doesn't say to do that. Like the video is still different. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what everyone's doing over there. But when I initially saw it, there was no sheet pan. The, the sauce was in strips, like it said. It's just the pictures look funny on the website now. Uh, but you can see how amazing this was. So I served this uh, for dinner for me and the kids. And, um, and again, my husband's been, oh, he was away for work for two weeks. Like he had to go away for four days. So you see a few videos with just us, but wow, this was seriously amazing. Definitely reminiscent of Extra my childhood days. Uh, no, he said zero, zero. What? He said zero. I did not. Yes, I did. He said zero, zero. No, 
豆腐来给他发一碗饭。一个是吉尔吉尔。You know a recipe is good when it's written like this on like a list of、uh, school cafeteria recipes. <laughs> so for this one, I'm just gonna chop up a quarter cup of onion and a quarter cup of green pepper, and、um, one I chopped up a clove of garlic, but I guess it's not actually in the recipe. But you know what, we're gonna put it anyway because garlic is delicious. And then the recipe says brown the meat, the onion, the green pepper in a skillet for about five minutes. I don't know about you, but every time I think of Sloppy Joes, I think of Adam Sandler, and Adam Sandler is actually、um, from New Hampshire, which is where I'm from. If you don't know,、uh, and from Manchester, New Hampshire, so that's actually right by where I live. Not to give too much away, but he's kind of like the hometown boy. So you got to make Sloppy Joes and think of、uh, the Lunch Lady song from Adam Sandler. If you ask me, anything with ground beef, peppers, and onions, I'm gonna be best friends with. So I'm into it. Smells delicious. Okay, it doesn't really say to drain it, but I'm gonna drain it because that's a lot of fat. I won't go crazy with it, but we'll get some of this fat off. Then we're gonna add in eight ounces of tomato sauce. It says a quarter cup of chili sauce, but I don't have that, and I don't. I'm surprised by that. Like I feel like. That would be kind of spicy for the kids. A quarter cup of celery, but unfortunately, I thought I bought some. I swear it's in my refrigerator, and I cannot find it. So when I do find it, I'll laugh about it. A half a teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of vinegar, a half a teaspoon of dry mustard, and one tablespoon of brown sugar. And I think these sloppy joes are just going to turn out quite good and fabulous. You know, I'm thinking because I don't have chili sauce, I might use chili powder because I feel like you do need a little bit of tang, just like not too crazy, almost like a taco type flavor, right? That's maybe like half a teaspoon. And then the recipe says to cook this for 20 to 25 minutes on like a low heat, so we'll give that a shot. I feel like it's really going to get pretty like pasty, and I think that's actually good. It's going to really cook down these green peppers and yellow onions. We got. 146 left on the timer after 20 minutes here, but you can see how thick this all got and how cooked down those peppers and onions. And I'm、uh, very hyped on this. It's gonna be delicious. So the sun is pretty intense this time of day, but、yeah. I'm serving this with、uh, leftover. It's Italian shredded Brussels sprout salad. It is so delicious. I made I've made it twice so far. I made it for Easter this year because that's how good it was. And this is actually leftover, but it keeps really nicely because the Brussels sprouts kind of hold up. And I'm gonna put the、um, link to the video that this is in down below. It's 22 strict budget meals. Fabulous recipes in that video. And then this is what we're gonna have our sloppy joes. Benny insists on sitting at the table now, but he's loving his. <laughs> and the boys have already been sloppy with theirs and made a mess, so I think they're gonna really enjoy. Chili sauce. Kind of. Did you hear a rating?、Mm, it's like a chili sauce, but instead it's a chili bear. What do you think? What do you give it? Four and a half. You say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> you like it? Can you, can you eat cheese. Can you eat? I just wanted to pop in here and remind you that I am very active over on Facebook. So if you go over there, you spend some time on Facebook. Go ahead and take a look for Meals with Maria, and you'll find me there. I'm asking lots of questions. We've got a great community. I'm sharing reels, and I'm also sharing different recipes that I find on different websites or on Facebook that I think you might enjoy. So I just wanted to let you know that I am there, and hopefully you'll check it out and enjoy what you find. This next recipe is for a fudgy sheet pan brownie. This is not necessarily the most health-conscious dessert. I mean, are any of them really? We're gonna start with one cup of butter, 
You wanna make sure that you put this in a microwave safe dish because we are gonna microwave this. And then we need eight ounces of baking chocolate. These chewy fudge brownies are definitely gonna be very reminiscent of my school days. I kind of remember seeing them on like the lunch tray. This feels a little wrong, but I'm not mad. I see there's like a really good looking recipe on the back of this. It's peanut butter cheesecake brownies. Maybe I should just throw this whole thing out and just make this instead. I, maybe I'll make them sometime for you guys if you're interested, just uh, comment below if you wanna see the peanut butter cheesecake brownies. So we're just gonna microwave this until everything's melted. The recipe says about two minutes. Okay, the recipe also says to grease a nine by 13 pan, which I'm gonna do. I feel like lunch lady reminds me of like a sheet pan, but we're just gonna go with what the recipe says. I feel like these are gonna be really thick, um, which sounds yummy, but I'm almost thinking like thin sheet pan ones. That's my lunch memories. Okay, you are gonna want an electric mixer for this one or like a hand mixer. We're gonna put five eggs in the bowl with three cups of sugar and a tablespoon of vanilla extract in the bottom of the bowl and then give it a good mix. And don't worry about the look of some of my sugar if it looked like brown, it's just, I have some like organic sugar in there and then some regular white sugar for some reason. Okay, so we, we've lowered the speed on this to low, obviously from high. I made sure that my chocolate and butter is all melted and we're just gonna slowly mix that in. How pretty. <laughs> I'm just gonna try and get this chocolate off the side here because we don't wanna we don't wanna miss out on any of the chocolatey goodness, right? Right, JJ? I want all the chocolate. Oh, this is fluffy. Now for the flour, you want to do one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Again, we're just gonna scrape down the sides here. Sometimes the flour gets stuck up at the top, so you just have to knock that kind of down. And then we're gonna add two cups of walnuts. This is probably a choice, but as I've gotten older, I've enjoyed nuts in my brownies and they taste delicious. Have so. I? Yeah. Can I eat them? Sure. until just combined, so. We're good. You don't like them? No. They're gonna be good in the, in the, I swear, they're really good with chocolate, okay? So we're just gonna pour this into our prepared pan. And I know that another good way to kind of prepare your pan for brownies is to use like parchment paper. I don't have any today, but if, you did, if I did have some, I might use it. It's a really nice way to make them, you know, not stick to the bottom of the pan. Brownies have a way of doing that, but I feel like I did spray it down pretty well, so we'll see how it turns out. So we're just gonna bake that at 375 degrees for 35 minutes. It's supposed to be like, have fudgy crumbs come out in the center when you're done, so we're gonna check that. Um, 35 minutes doesn't seem like long enough to me, but we will see. So this is the exciting part. We're gonna make the frosting for these. You're gonna start off with one and a quarter cups of sugar and one cup of heavy cream. And this recipe is scaring me a little bit. It says that we're gonna mix it together and let it cook until it simmers. And we wanna make sure that the sugar is dissolved. I'm just worried it's gonna burn, basically. So it says this should take about three minutes for the sugar to dissolve. And then we're gonna turn it down to low and let it simmer for seven minutes. I feel like this is gonna turn into like a condensed milk type thing. So it's starting to come up to a little simmer and it's definitely much thinner. I can feel that the sugar has dissolved. Okay, I'm setting the timer for seven minutes. I'm terrified. Okay, I don't, it didn't burn. I'm so excited. All right, we're gonna add five ounces of unsweetened baking chocolate. Hey, you, you told me that you were gonna use that. A half a cup of butter. Oh. It said softened. I wanna, I wanna put it on. No, 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 too hot. So Can I mix this it? This is soft enough because I Can put I it next it? to it. Can I no, because it? it's so hot. I don't want you to burn yourself. Okay. All right, so this is starting to look really silky. Like, look how beautiful that looks. We're almost done melting all the chocolate and uh, and the butter. And it just, 
I mean, it just looks like velvet. I'm so excited for this. And if, and I know I said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. This is not a healthy dessert. It's not a low calorie dessert, but it is gonna be a delicious dessert. And we do wanna add one teaspoon of vanilla to this. So we're gonna put this in the fridge and then every uh, five minutes or so, we're supposed to stir it. So this is definitely an involved recipe, but it should make it like thick and creamy and uh, cooled, cooled down. All right, it's been 35 minutes. So we're gonna test this. Should have fudgy bits. That looks a little like, yeah, it looks a little wet to me versus fudgy bits. I don't know. Good thing we're gonna put frosting on it so you won't know. Yeah, that's not cooked. <laughs> and I had a feeling about that. So we're gonna put it in a little bit longer. All right, now I feel like I hope I didn't overcook it, but it's like cracked. Oh yeah, it's cooked. Those are the crumblies, I guess. It's almost like a little much on the sides, but I think it'll be good, especially when we put that frosting on it. Yes, ma'am. I wanna thank you so much for watching today. I hope you find yourself kind of sitting in a more comfortable lunchroom table with a more delicious meal after this video. If you're looking for some more nostalgia, go ahead and check out this next video and make sure the next time you're on YouTube, you're watching Meals with Maria. Every day.